Hi, it's Mr. Anderson. Today I'm gonna to be talking about homeostasis hugs. One of my favorite videos on YouTube is the free hugs video. Um, I think it has something like 72 million views. This guy walks around with a free hug sign, takes him forever, but he finally gets his first hug. And so then it goes on to get all these hugs. They eventually ban hugs, but give it a watch. Uh, here's the address right down here. But basically when you're hugging somebody or when you're wrapping your arms around somebody, you're transferring something between the two of you. And in a hug, that's called love. And so in this podcast, I'm gonna talk about hugs, but not hugs between people. It's hugs between tissues. Uh, and those tissue hugs are used to maintain homeostasis or to maintain an internal stable uh, body or environment. And so um, let me get rid of this and go to some actual homeostasis hugs. And so the first one I wanna talk about is something called countercurrent heat exchange. Uh, and we actually use it in engineering to keep uh, uh, a house warm. But basically it keeps an organism warm. And so we would see this like in the legs of a moose, we'd see it in the feet of a bird, or in the flippers of a dolphin. Countercurrent heat exchange works like this. Basically if you think this is the body of the moose standing here on the snow, you want to maintain that heat inside the body. And so basically this right here, the leg of the moose I've drawn over here, so this is going to be the top of the moose. This is going to be the hoof of the moose down here. Uh, and then this is going to be the body of the moose up here. So basically we want, we want to keep heat up here. So what they have is they have the arteries. So the artery is moving blood away from the body and the vein is returning blood to the body. What they'll do is they'll wrap those right around each other. So they'll be hugging. And what they're transferring is, uh, is not blood. What they're transferring is heat. In other words, we have a high temperature, we'll say, right as it leaves the body, let's say the temperature is close to 100 degrees, it's reaching or is right next to blood that is cooler than that. And so the heat is gonna flow from a warmer to a cooler area. But what happens is, since it gets progressively cooler here, a lot of that heat actually moves back up to the body before it goes way down to the extremities. And so you'll have in the hoof of a moose, you're gonna have a temperature that's pretty much near freezing but it's, it's not cold enough that the tissues will die. But the nice thing about a countercurrent heat exchange is it's holding all that heat uh, right up here inside the body. And you have the same thing, and we can actually turn that on. We can hold that when we're starting to get really, really cold, hold that body heat next to ourselves. But it only works if the artery and the vein are hugging each other. They're really, really close. Next one would be in the lungs. And so what's the homeostasis is what's it trying to maintain it's trying to maintain oxygen inside our body and so there are alveoli which are these little sacs inside the lungs but if you look right here they're being hugged by capillaries so the capillaries are wrapped right around it so again you should always be thinking if there's a hug what's being transferred between the two in this case it's oxygen is being transferred from the alveoli into those capillaries and carbon dioxide is being loaded off into the alveoli so it can eventually uh, leave and so it has to be a very close contact between the two. In fact, it's just one thin layer of cells between these two tissues, and that allows us to transfer those uh, gases and keep us maintaining that homeostatic uh, environment. In other words, the right amount of oxygen inside each of our cells. Next one would be a little bit more confusing. Again, we're going harder. This would be the nephron. So the nephron is going to be inside the kidney. Um, what a kidney does is, is essentially fourfold. Number one is it's going to do filtration. So it's going to filter. So let's go filter. Uh, next, it's going to secrete. Next, it's going to reabsorb. And finally, it's going to excrete. Those are the four things that a kidney essentially does. Okay, so how does that work? Well, basically the blood, if we follow this cursor here, the blood is flowing up. It's flowing up through these capillaries and eventually smack, it ends into the end of the glomerulus. Right here is the end of that pathway. And if you look here, where's the red coming out? The red doesn't come out. The red goes in and out the same exact way. And so that's how we get filtration of the blood. The little things will squirt out here into the filtrate. 
Next though, we want to secrete things that we uh, don't want to uh, have inside our body and then reabsorb some of the things that we actually do. So small things that will filter out right here, but as it moves through this proximal and then eventually through this distal tubule, there are large things that we want to use active transport to actually reabsorb and move out. Uh, and so also as we go through the loop of Henley, water is one of those big things that we have to move water out and sodium out. Uh, and so if you look, there's hugs this whole way through the proximal and distal tubule. So what are we transferring? Right here we're transferring things, large things that we want to get rid of or large things that we want to keep. And it doesn't work unless we have this close contact between those tissues. So again, another hug. The last one I want to talk about is countercurrent gas exchange. And this is going to be found in uh, the gills of a fish. And so if you live in water, you face a, a, a major issue. And that is, is that there is not much oxygen available, O2, available inside the water. So you have to have a really efficient system for exchanging oxygen with the water. Now it's moist, and so, so that's something that we deal with on land. but. As that water comes in, you want to get as much of the oxygen as you possibly can out. And so the way it works in a fish is they have these operculum. So what they'll do is they'll open their mouth. And as they open their mouth and they open this gill covering, that's going to move the water right over their gill filaments. We call those lamella. And the lamella are increasing surface area, so they're really, really small. But they're basically set up so the blood is going to flow in this direction and the water is going to flow in the opposite direction. So what does that mean? These capillaries in the lamella, it's actually going to move the blood, so the blood will come through in this direction but it's going to be moving in opposition to the water, which is moving in the other direction. And the stat that I remember hearing is that they can get about 80% of the oxygen that's available in the water, they can get that out. So what does that mean? Right here as the water is flowing in, it's going to have 100% of the oxygen that's dissolved inside the water. And when it leaves, it's only going to have 20%. So you might think, how did, they, how did they get all of that out? Well, they're using a countercurrent exchange. In this case, it's gas exchange. And so if we look at, what did I say, what's the number? Well, 80% is how much they're actually taking out. And so if we say, right this, right here, we'll say it's like 5% oxygen that maybe makes it around the body of the fish and comes here. Well, you can see here that right here, there's going to be exchange of gas from the water, oxygen, which is 20% oxygen, 5% right here. And so let's say, let's make up the numbers here. Let's say this is 50% uh, here. And down here, it's going to be, we'll say 30%. And so right here, there's going to be more oxygen available. And so there's more oxygen in the blood, but it's, it's, it's meeting water that is even more pure. And as we get up here to it's 80% water, and this is like 60% in the blood, there's constantly this gradient. And so as you get way to the end where we've, we've taken out 60% of the oxygen that we could get, you're facing water that is 100% pure. It has almost all the oxygen that it possibly can. And so by putting the flow in this direction and the um, blood moving in the other direction, we have this gradient and it allows us to get the maximum amount, and when I say we, the fish, to get the maximum amount of oxygen they can out of the water. And so that's another hug. And so it's going to be a close contact between the water in this case and the uh, capillaries in the lamella. And so that hug allows us to maintain homeostasis. And uh, I hope that's helpful.